We are going ultra wide angle for this shot because I want to show you guys everything we're throwing into our next PC build. As of late, we've been putting together builds that have been a bit more value oriented, uh, essentially bang for the buck, right? So a sweet spot for a lot of people's anywhere between, I would say, 600 bucks and a thousand, maybe upwards of 12, 1300 dollars. Anywhere in that pretty broad range is where you'll get the most performance for the dollar spent. In this case, however, we don't care about budget. I have no idea how much all of these parts cost combined. It's gonna be on screen somewhere. Uh, these parts were all sent for different projects and I decided to throw a lot of them together uh, into this build video here. So if you want among the best of the best when it comes to a consumer grade gaming PC, you might wanna follow along. Corsair's Hydrox series custom water cooling suite is fitted with everything you need to build something like this. Start with the configurator, plan your loop, and choose from stylish water blocks to clean fittings, copper rads to durable coolants. You can find it all from Corsair via the link below. I want to run through the parts very quickly. I know you can check all these out in the video description if you're interested, but uh, just to kind of rationalize my uh, part choices here, the Ryzen 7 3800X was kind of a no-brainer. You could go with a 3700X. Actually, that would be a more reasonable choice because you're going to save about uh, 60 to 80 bucks, and you're really not going to see much of a difference at all in game. Possibly higher boost frequencies with the 3800X, which is why we're going with that. Also, another reason is because the 3700X is currently being used in another system, so we have that one there. I don't recommend Ryzen 9. We could have used that, and that would have been potentially an overkill gaming system. You're not going to see a huge difference, if any difference at all, between 8 cores and 12 cores for, again, most if not all games out there. Uh, so if you're going to go for just a purely, like, killer gaming system. Ryzen 7 Zen 2 is the sweet spot right now. You could of course go with the 9900K or the 9700K from Intel, but Ryzen right now packs the value for the money and we're not going to make I mean, we're not going to make stupid choices with the budget. I, I know I said that budget really wasn't a concern here, but, uh, you know, push comes to shove. Am I going to buy a $300 processor or a $450 processor if they're pretty much neck and neck with each other in a lot of games? And that's why I went with the uh, Ryzen 7 chip here. Uh, the motherboard we're going to be using is the X570 Phantom Gaming X from ASRock. We have, uh, haven't used an ASRock board in quite a while, but uh, I have actually grown to love ASRock and what they've been doing as of late. I remember we were using their original X99 nine Tai Chi boards back in the day back in the day uh, and they make great stuff and they've improved a lot especially in the power delivery department and the Phantom Gaming X is definitely no exception to that rule we have a Seasonic Focus 80 plus gold power supply here we also have custom sleeve cable mod cables you'll see the color scheme here in a second it's gonna look really nice we have gone with a 2080 Super from Nvidia uh, it is the reference card it's not gonna I mean, it's not going to be the best when it comes to cooling and, and uh, sound, but it's going to look mighty fine in our case. This is a Corsair 2, for, 2, no, 2, 4, it's 465X, and uh, we recently built in the 220T. I'm not sure if you can see that in the shot, but uh, custom loop in that PC there, it's a bit more compact overall. This is a slightly larger mid-tower, so I expect we can fit a bit more stuff in here, and uh, it'll, yeah, just be a little more roomy. And then we lastly have a H150i Pro, and this will be the cooling solution for our Ryzen 7 3800X. I think a, a 360 mini IO is probably a, a bit overkill. Um, Ryzen tends to run a bit hot nowadays, but uh, you could get by with uh, even like a Hyper 212 if you really wanted. I uh, just wanted to go a bit overkill here and, and keep the system as quiet as possible. We also have 16 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4. My rationalization for 16 over 32 is that the difference in game between 16 and 32 is not that great, although some programs will definitely benefit from the increase in DDR4 size. I, I just think that uh, for a pure gaming system, 16 gigs is plenty, and we've got uh, pretty fast memory at that at 3,000 megahertz. I mean, it's Corsair Don Platts. So, okay, come on, like it's some of the best memory you can get. Uh, these are actually my favorite models right here. They're, they're actually a generation old, but I love this design, so that's why I went with them. All right, here we go. Let's get to building. One second, sorry about that. Phantom Gaming X isn't gonna work. The reason why, red accents. I'm gonna be picky. This is a build that's gonna cost over two grand. Our custom sleep cables from Cable Mod are neon green, light green. I figured that would look great with the RTX graphics card. So um, yeah, I don't want this to be a Christmas themed build, not that time of the year yet. I'm gonna scrap this solely on the color scheme alone. In fact, 
The power delivery on the Phantom Gaming X, I believe, is identical to the Tai Chi's. And the Tai Chi has uh, gold accents, yeah, well, really only over the chipset. Everywhere else it's silver and black, that'll look much better with the neon green. We're also using silver DDR4, so I figured that would look pretty great. And uh, yeah, I I've never been wronged by a Tai Chi board before, going back as early as X99 Tai Chi. So um, ASRock did a great job here. Again, I think the power delivery is the same, even if it's not, I'm sure this will be a consistent board. And uh, so I'll link this one instead of the Phantom Gaming X down below if you are interested. One other quick change, 20D Super Founders Edition uses an 8 plus 6 pin config. I expected it to be 8 plus 8. Most of the EIBs I've been working with are 8 plus 8. I didn't expect NVIDIA to cap off the extra two pins on the end either, which I think is a little weird, so it's not like I gave a Jimmy two 8 pins into the, uh, into the ports here, but not to worry, we've got an even better card. The 20D Super was gonna be, I, I, I would say, the, the better buy for most people was just gonna be better bang for the buck, even though it's still really expensive, and I don't generally recommend it for most people. We're gonna do the 20D Ti instead. This card is, uh, Friggin' expensive, it's the MSI Ventus model. It's actually a, a, one of the cheaper variants of the 20D Ti because it uses a Founders PCB, so nothing special going on underneath, although it is still a powerhouse. I've linked it down below in place of the 20D Super. So, sorry for these two changes. I just, I wanted to use a card that uh, worked with our custom sleeve cables, and actually, there are some nice light green accents running along the side here and on top of the back plate, and uh, this will look really nice with our custom sleeve cables. So, I'm kind of all right with this. Thank you. 
Well, here she is in all her glory. I have the RGB synced up now, so you can see it's got like a, a kind of a light green theme going on. I wanted that to match the custom cables. It just, I, I'm a big fan of this. I really think this is a system that I'm gonna use for quite a while. I actually didn't tell you guys this earlier, but this is gonna be my personal editing rig and uh, gaming rig for, yeah, for the foreseeable future. I wanted to, to push totally to Ryzen for a good while and uh, test out DaVinci Resolve as well, which is a program I've been meaning to switch to permanently for quite a while because I am extremely frustrated with Adobe Premiere Pro. If you guys don't like this build, let me know why. Let me know what you would change about it. Again, the budget really wasn't something I was trying to adhere to here. I just wanted to throw together a very powerful system. This is one of the most powerful systems you can build currently, and uh, I'm excited to actually use it. I've been using a 1070 Ti for so long. I have plenty of 2080s, 2070s, and whatever in the closet, but 1070 Ti has been great for what I do. Uh, I want to see how the 2080 Ti is utilized by DaVinci Resolve. So I'll follow up in a video, I'm sure in a few months, letting you guys know how this system has been treating me, but I uh, thought it was time to jump ship uh, and uh, say goodbye to that 9900K. Speaking of which, that system is over there, and I'm probably going to do a follow-up video on that one here soon because the cooler there is just not good enough. Quad, uh, H7 Quad Lumi from Prior Rig is just not powerful enough. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not a big enough cooler, not a beefy enough cooler to uh, keep those temps in check. So we're going to be upgrading the cooler uh, in a future video. Again, thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, thumbs up. Click that red subscribe button. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.